Oh, there we go. Hello, it's everyone. Cool. Welcome to uh, Cullen on Films, a new podcast that we're doing, and we're here with Ashley Williams. Hello, Ashley. How are you doing? Hi. You know, I, I hear your jersey there with Ashley. Oh, yeah. <laughs> your jersey's showing. Well, you know, well, you're from New York, so you kind of, you have that New York. No, listen, I was born in Yonkers, so I'm seeing myself in you, <laughs> and I like it. I go to, uh, I, I saw that, wet, like, Westchester area, and I'm like, I, I go to Scarsdale all the time and White Plains. Yeah. So I'm yeah. there. Um, so it's like all my cousins and things from that area. But I came to Jersey, so I'm a Jersey boy. Nice. <laughs> well, when we get started, uh, uh, you know, we're doing this um, because everyone's home again. And it, it's something mm -hmm. I, I thought of. I said, hey, let's do this. And um, we, all, we usually do Hang On To Your Shorts uh, Film Festival podcast. And you have a film that got, uh, got into the festival and it's great. But why don't we... I'm going to rewind a little bit and, and go from the beginning. So I uh, wanted to ask you, like, what got you into the business and acting first? Because you started as an actor. Ooh, okay. How this, did that start out? This is, um, this might age me a bit, but I, uh, when I was uh, like 11 years old or so, I started auditioning for commercials. Because oh. <laughs> as I said, we were, I grew up just outside of New York City. So my mom would like, it was like my sister booked a national dairy commercial when she was like 14 and made so much. It basically paid for like an entire year of college at the time. Mm -hmm. And my mom was like, you're all going to have to get in the car after school every day and audition for things. Like it's not negotiable. And we we're like, okay. did you go on on the set or uh, during that? Were you there? No, not for her national dairy. It was literally like half a day she worked, you know? <laughs> It yeah. was like back in the day when commercials would sort of take care of you for life. Cool. Um, and anyway, but I, then I started working. I started working pretty early. I was doing commercials. I was doing print, blah, blah, blah. And then I was on a soap opera. Um, and then I went to theater school and I did a bunch of theater when I first got out of school. And then I um, booked a TV show in LA and lived there for 13 years. Wow. Um, and then I moved back to New York around when the Gaffigan show yeah. um started going and my husband was starting a production company in New York. So we just sort of went there and we've been in New York ever since until the global pandemic when we yeah. ran back to California oh, okay. <laughs> from New York. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I was like saying, Oh, I got confused. Cause I was thinking New York timing for some reason. Right. Well, normally I am in New York, so yeah, but whatever. Uh, you know, I, I've been out to LA, but I, you know, I'm New Jersey, New York, most of my life doing all this kind of stuff. And, and there's so much work in New York. There really is. Um, and you said you've done theater. Um, is that what you, you started at? Well, other than the commercials, did you do theater for a long time? Yeah. I, um, I, my first job was understudying, a, a play, um, on the Upper West Side, it was a Neil LeBute play, and I understudied Rachel Weiss and Gretchen Maul, who were the two female leads in a play called The Shape of Things, um, and Paul Rudd and Fred Weller were the other stars. He's a so good boy. Really, All right. Really high-profile show, and I had just gotten back from Williamstown, where I was a non-equity member, so I was I just spent you know three months doing theater there, and then came and this was the first job, and then um, it was like. So it was, oh, uh, Rachel Weiss's father had quadruple bypass surgery in the middle of the show. So she had to leave for a while. So I got to take over her role, which was really, her dad ended up being fine, but I, it did wonders for my career. <laughs> well, I've noticed too, like be, being like uh, behind the scenes and um, directing in the last few years of my life that uh, I go and I see someone in a play and then that, and that, I'm like, oh my God, I got to get that person into the film. So it's mostly seeing people on Broadway or in a play and think, wow, their performances were so good. So that's that's kind of how I looked at it. And yeah, that, it's cool. Wow. I mean, it's sort of a different skill set, but ultimately is based all in the same stuff, you know? Um, but I, I did do a Broadway show uh, a couple of years ago and uh, that was like the the penultimate, you know? That was like the height of sort of esteem and... Um, it was crazy just knowing that each person in the audience had paid like $200 to be there. I was the yeah. pressure, you know, it was crazy. We were just going to, for our school, we were just going to go see Phantom for the first time. Oh yeah. It's month. And then, you know, all this happened. So right. we oh, actually wow. had someone from Phantom send us a video because of that. So that was great. For the oh, good. But, uh, 
but I, I never even saw it. So I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to go. And then oh. here we go, right? Well, you know, they're doing all these Andrew, Andrew Lloyd Webber um, shows. Uh, he's releasing one every Friday. Do you know about this? So they just did Joseph. Like, like in, oh. On YouTube. YouTube? Oh. 48 hours. Oh. Uh, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat was on YouTube for 48 hours, like the original Broadway. Oh, wow. Um, and it was so fun. My kid, both my husband and I were jumping around the living room like crazy people. And my two kids who are like two and five years old were just staring at us like, you guys are nuts. Um, <laughs> we are total theater nerds. We just, we love it. We love it so much. I love going to theater. I heard PBS is also showing some free ones as well. You know what? I heard that too. Yeah. And Broadway.com or Broadway World is doing a bunch. So it's kind of cool. People want to throw us a bone, which is nice. I can't wait to, well, when this is over, I, I had a feeling, I was talking to people earlier too about uh, when this is all over, I think it's going to, the business is just going to blow up again, like really, because in 2020 kind of started out, so many films were going on. We had so many uh, films entered in our festival. Yeah. Uh, it just, it seems like it just, you know, standstill stop. But I think people are writing and creating. And I think as soon as we get out of this, it's going to blow up again. I think you're right. The word that I keep coming across is renaissance. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I think it's, we're due for a new outlook on the world and on communication and storytelling and community. And I am really interested. I mean, this is obviously a horrendous, horrendous national tragedy, but also I, I'm really interested to see what the pivot is from here. It's, it's going to be an interesting talk about a show. Out there right now, or is, it, is it settling down at all? Or um, New Jersey is not doing so well right now. Yeah, Jersey and New York are not great. California is pretty good. I mean, Gavin Newsom is, he's doing a great job, I think. Um, I mean, listen, it's, you know, we're all, and ultimately, like, in our homes, we're all going through the same stuff, which is, I don't know, but I have tiny children, and so that is so hard. And I'm so jealous of my friends who were like, oh, I'm just bored. I'm like, I'm exhausted, you know? I know. I'm by myself here and I'm losing my mind, but I have uh, my sister, and my brother, little, yeah, I have nieces and nephews and I can't even, the f like first couple of days this happened, I, 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 my, I went saw my four year old nephew, he's running up to me to hug me. I'm like, get away, get away. He was like, what? Yeah, he's looking at me like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, and he, and he had a cold. So I was like, get away from me. I'm like. No, that's terrible. That's lit. That makes me scared. Yeah, and Do I would you ever gonna, like shake hands again, like as a people. No, I don't think so. Isn't that interesting? Because I've always been such a hugger and such a physical. Yeah. You know, it's, my friends make fun of me because whenever somebody says something funny, I put my hand on their shoulder and sort of fall into them. I don't think I can ever do that again. Well, even even when when you meet people when you go to the um, that the winter con thing, the the, the Christmas con, oh, you get to meet people. I know. I, I love. I hugged every single person. I probably spread coronavirus there. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a great yeah, event. Yeah. I was able to do that again because I go to a lot of comic cons, especially with Ming and stuff. We do a lot of cons and podcasting, yeah. and a lot of film stuff too. A lot of festivals go on, so I, I, I've done a lot of those. And I don't know when those are coming back. Right? Yeah, I'm looking. We're doing a Christmas con in Jersey. I think it's going to be in. I think they just rescheduled it for maybe October or something. Yeah, I, actually, uh, I had such a good time when I was there. I talked to the people. I'm like, I'm helping out next year. Let let me help because I, you know, oh. I, I, so I was doing some B-roll and stuff for them and had some stuff out. So uh, I had a blast and uh, I got like the last ticket there. And so that's awesome. Oh well, you got to come back. I mean, I hope we're. I hope we'll do it. I'm sure we'll do it. The world will come back. Yes. And, uh, I told them I'll film. I'll film the uh, Q and A's and things like that if you want. Oh, and, like, Awesome. Something I wanted. I wanted to help out because I thought they did such a good job. Yeah, it was. I had a great time. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. So that was that was a lot of fun. So uh, you went from uh, all that. Now we're going to talk. I want to kind of move to behind the scenes. So did all this acting. Well, all, you were in like a ton of shows, by the way. I know <laughs> a lot of TV shows. <laughs> uh, I actually, it was pretty funny. I was looking at your list and I saw you did the Good Wife. Yeah. So you were on that. I was like, I was like, oh my, that's our Kevin uh, Bacon connection because I was also on the Good Wife. 
Oh, there you go. Oh, I was like hoping that you were saying that I'm connected to Kevin Bacon, but no, you're saying that we were connected. Yeah, connected, yeah. I did. I, I, early on when I first started, I did a lot of behind the scenes uh, acting for a while too. So oh, nice. I, I was in Union then, and I did that show for like a week, and uh, I was the maintenance guy. I got on. It was it was a lot of fun. So I was like, you know what? Because I was a teacher, I did it in the summer, and then I ended up getting the SAG card anyway. So that's amazing. That's so cool. That was it was that was when it, the show first started. So I don't know. And then I actually was on the last season too. I went back and I did a little. No way. No, it was, it was as the maintenance cool. guy, or were you somebody else? I was somebody else. I was just like wow. A little, a little so, cool. stuff. so uh, I I learned a lot doing that in the summer. Did summer. Mark Sachs cast you? Huh? Did Mark Sachs cast you? No, it was just the just the featured extra. I see. Oh I forget who did it. Uh, who was doing that? Grant Wilfie, I think, was doing it. Got it. Got so it, got it. A random thing, because I would do it in the summer for just extra things. And yeah. I actually did it because I wanted to go behind the scenes and learn behind the scenes work. Yeah. So I would be an extra. And next thing you know, I'm talking to directors. I'm behind there. And I made my way through. Got the SAG card. I'm always doing this yeah. stuff. But even though I did some of that little acting stuff, uh, I, I wanted to learn how to direct. and how to, And that's how I did it. So nice. off on my own, I did it, and I met so many people that way. But yeah. that was it. That's how I, I I ended up. I didn't go to film school, but it, you know, I, I I was in the business for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. So met a lot of people that way, and I still know them to this day. So it was it was. Oh, awesome. I love that. That's so cool. Just a fun little story. <laughs> but uh, uh, so you yourself, you you went from acting into behind the camera and direct, well, writing and directing. Because uh, you know, we just for hang on to your shorts. We have your film meets. Yeah. So uh, you've done that before, though, right? That wasn't your first one. Yeah. Well, it was my that was my directorial debut. Um, yeah, it was meets. Um, I I the only other thing I did behind the camera was I produced um, a Hallmark movie a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was really fun and actually, honestly, really helped me. Um, I most recently was I prepped and had started directing a lifetime movie um up until three weeks ago we got our fourth majeure on march 16th oh. um due to the pandemic but uh producing that hallmark movie really helped me because it's a you know it was a 15 day shoot and um really super low budget uh <laughs> and really, yeah and and just really all about sort of finding a heartfelt connection which is sort of what goes what that's the hallmark game is finding the emotional connection um which is a game i like to play so um so that was a, a movie that i that i conceived and sold and hired the writers and then produced and then starred in and that was sort of my first thing and then um and the whole time i was there i kept thinking like i think i could do this directing thing like i think i i think i understand what's going on here you know um and it was the first time i really started to think that and then I started shadowing. Um, and then <clears throat> I basically got, I was on a TV show uh, like a little over a year ago and I got fired. I was an actress and I got fired. Really? Wow. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, it happens wow. to the best of us. <laughs> but I, I got replaced by this girl that I just love. She's just the best. And I've known her for 20 years and I was so hurt. It was just terrible. But I have a, a good friend who at the time worked at Netflix and she texted me because there was a there was an announcement on deadline and like letting everybody know that I had been fired and that this girl was replacing me and it was very public and it was on a Friday afternoon which means it's going to be up on the front of deadline for the entire week and it was just like the, it was so embarrassing anyway so she um she texted me and she said vodka or tequila um and I was like tequila and she's like great I'll I'll be at your house after work. And I was like, okay. So and this is not a girl that I'd like hung out with very much. Mm -hmm. She, she was kind of, she's, she felt a little fancy to me, you know, she was, she always been so nice to me, but like, we never like sat down together and hung out. And I kind of felt like she's kind of fancy. Like she worked at Netflix, you know? Yeah. Anyway, so she shows up and she makes me a, a margarita and she sat me down on the couch and she was like, what are you doing? Like, why are you not directing? I know you, she said, you've got this reputation for being somebody that everybody loves. You've worked, you know, you've done over 250 episodes of television. Everybody enjoys spending time with you. Like, why are you not doing this? And I said, well, I just feel like, you know, there's plenty of directors out there. And she said, no, there aren't plenty of 
of female directors. No, no. I said, well, but I, I'm not trained. And she said, well, then why don't you train yourself? So I sat down with my husband, who's a film producer, and uh, he like immediately grabbed a yellow pad and he wrote curriculum at the top of the yellow pad. And he was like, we're going to put you through grad school. We're going to make a grad school program for you and it's going to cost money and time and it's going to be really hard and it's going to take at least a year. But if we really commit and we really do this, this is going to happen. And I was like, okay. So um, we, we started, you know, basically a list of how I was going to spend my time. Um, we hired a nanny. Um, I started shadowing. I, I, um, accompanied a bunch of directors that I love so much and respect so much and learn so much from. Um, I followed, um, and if you've got filmmakers you're working with, there's a book called Directors Tell the Story by Bethany Rooney, which has become my Bible. And in that book, she has the um, shadowing director's guidebook, which is sort of the tenets of a good shadow. Yeah. Because there's a lot of shadows who, you know, will swing by a set and stay there for six hours and sort of watch. Um, but, you know, what I did and what it sounds like you did being on set and having a presence there is you're there from before call and you're the last person to leave. Um, you're not sitting there on your phone. You're not socializing. You're not there trying to get a job. You are watching and observing and learning and immersing yourself. Um, yeah. And so I followed those. Um, I was the first person on set, the last person to leave. Um, I never sat down. I sat there and took notes and didn't ask questions because I didn't want to distract the director and uh, really just treated it like my classroom. And um, and then I assigned myself tasks like I had to write a short film a week um, for a little while and Meets was one of the short films. Yeah, so um, that was what how that came about. Oh, well. and uh, yeah, so meets it was very well done and and you want you, you put yourself in the and you directed it and you had uh, one other actor in it as well well he's actually just a butcher he's oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> i uh i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't feel good about myself and hire an actor to yeah. butcher oh, um yeah. so basically i just cut a lot of his dialogue and made him sort of an active listener and then gave him material that he really understood, which was all about the treatment of the animal and what his job is. And he just sort of spoke from his heart about that. And then we, we broke down an entire lamb on camera. Oh, wow. Yeah. I saw that. I was going to ask, I was going to say, was that a real? <laughs> Some things you can't fake. Yeah. yeah it looked real. <laughs> it really looked real. <laughs> It was an expensive prop, yeah. but well worth it. That was uh, well. Uh, where did you film that? Was that What's so? We filmed it in uh, Dixon's Butcher Shop down in Chelsea Market okay. in the city. So I basically went around to all these different butcher shops. And, Sorry, oh. all over Manhattan. Yeah, I walked in and they all thought I was insane. So. The first place I went into is a place called Hudson and Charles on the Upper West Side, really close to my house. And they just like laughed me out of there. They were like, no, we're not letting you back here. Like that's, that's like against a food code. Like that's, it's against it. It's a health code violation. And I was like, but it's, it's for my art. You know, <laughs> they were like, get out of here. <laughs> so I went to a bunch of different places and then eventually um, they were like, you know, Dixon's butcher shop. They like to be on camera, was what someone told me. And I was like, those are my people. So I just walked in there one day and literally I, within 15 minutes of pitching it to Jake Dixon, who runs the place, who's such a good guy, he offered me an internship at the butcher shop so that I could learn how everything worked around here. So I started interning there. Um, and uh, I learned a lot about butchering animals, many things I wish I didn't know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then, uh, so you had written that beforehand and then, uh, and then you went and saw all that. Did you change the script when you were there at all? Yeah. yeah. I overwrote ahead of time, um, and overshot a bit. Um, yeah. I wasn't exact. I, I did have a rehearsal with the guy that played the butcher. 
but I really wasn't sure what was going to happen. And he was really nervous. Um, and uh, <laughs> I would, I would, it ended up being perfect. Yeah. Nervous, yeah. You know, worked out. Um, yeah. And uh, so, you know, a lot of it sort of came together in editing. I didn't really um, understand the first time I saw it in front of an audience was at Sundance and yeah. it was it like, it brought the house down, like just hysterical laughter throughout. And I had not occurred to me that it was funny really yeah. until then. Cause it always was just so tragic to me and honest and sad. And, you know, um, so in hindsight, it became comedic, but at the time it, I didn't, I didn't think it was. <laughs> no, no. I could see some parts of it to be, being funny, but I thought it was pretty serious. <laughs> yeah, right? I know. But in a crowd, it was just yeah. like rolling laughter. It was so weird. So how was how was Sundance this year? I know a lot of, oddly enough, I knew a lot of people that went out this year. Uh, that was like- it was, a awesome. it was awesome. I've been, we've gone every year um, because my husband, as I said, is a film producer and he's had a yeah. bunch of movies there. And we also go, it's like sort of like a- how do I say it? It's like a work retreat for this other, these other group I work with sometimes. So we go and watch movies and go skiing and sort of talk about what we're doing. Anyway, sorry. Anyway, so I we go every year, um, yep. see movies and um, I just, uh, I love it, but I'd never gone as a filmmaker before. Yep. It was, I felt so special. Um, and a poor look, I'm wearing my little sweatshirt. Oh, you got the Sunday? Yes. Here, this is. <laughs> I know it's backwards, like a reverse mirror. Um, yeah, I, I went and bought like all the t-shirts, all yeah. the pens. I was like, this is never going to happen again. <laughs> I'm so proud. Um, you yeah, know, great. great moment seeing your film that you directed uh, up on the big screen there in Sundance. It must be a great moment. Yeah, I wrote, directed, starred in it, produced it. You know, I did everything. <laughs> and the fact that it was, you know. When it was, I really, the reason I really did it is because I wanted to get into Ryan Murphy's half initiative program. Yeah. Um, and that was the, and I was like, what would Ryan Murphy like? Oh, he'd be into like me sawing up a dead animal. You know? <laughs> that was a great idea. And then, then I, I noticed you said, well, it was, uh, you, you had written on it that uh, you are not part of PETA and you do, you do eat meat. So. Yeah, I, yeah, I am a, I am a meat eater. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've always been over making that. You're like, Oh, I got to stop a little bit. Or <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm never going to eat lamb again. Yeah. Um, just cause, ugh. uh, we also took home the entire carcass to eat and it took up our entire freezer and we did cook a lot of it. We made, you know, rack of lamb. We did as much as we could. And then I was just like, I can't. So we gave it away. I it's I it was just like too because I did I did eat it raw on camera. Yeah, and you I, were actually eating it. I saw the scenes. I was gonna ask you to actually eat that like that. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I'm like, nah, she's not eating it. It was disgusting. So <laughs> like I've always I've always eaten like I've I've gone through so many phases in my life. I've been vegan, I've been vegetarian, I've you know, done like an Atkins diet where all I ate was meat. Like I've done it all. Um but the the meat eating is always something that I've I've always felt bad about it. Yeah. And so a few years ago I started reading, you know, reading a lot about it, eating animals, Jonathan Suffern Flora book, um, Michael Pollan's work. Um, most recently I read a re leading up to me writing this, I had been reading a book called um Killing It by Camus Davis, uh, which is about a female butcher. And I was like, that's kind of a great idea for like a character, you yeah. know. Um, so that's sort of where I got the idea. Um, but I, I enjoyed the research on the ethics of meat eating. It's, it's a really interesting topic for me. Um, I, I, the idea of having an identity in your mind that your body disagrees with is really fascinating to me. You know, I crave meat, but I don't want to is, mm -hmm. I love that push pull. It's sort of a metaphor for many things. It's hard. I know a lot of people are going vegan and vegetarian, and I can't myself. I don't eat that much meat, though. I eat a lot of chicken, though. I had chicken thigh, yeah. but I try to stay away. I don't like eat many steaks or anything like that. I just it's so hard. I mean, I the reason I stopped being vegan was because I started fainting, mm -hmm. and I went to the doctor, and he said you're 
kind of has. Iron is really low and you, you're not making the proper amino acids and you should introduce meat into your life. So yeah, same here. We don't need a lot, but like I do need it. I'm a person that I'm a O negative blood. I don't know if that's a myth, but I do better when I eat it. I just don't like myself. And yeah. I find that really interesting. <laughs> the self-hatred. <laughs> But uh, the movie, it, it came out great, and we all loved it, obviously. And uh, it, we were hoping to get it uh, played in uh, April. But, uh, I'm sorry. But we moved it to September. We, it was funny because in Asbury Park, New Jersey, um, that's where it is, uh, it's really hard to, to book places because it fills up so quick around here. Right. The only weekend we were able to get was September 12th and 13th. But we thought it was enough time, hopefully, hopefully enough time for everyone to uh, be able to go. Um, but we have a lot of films this year. We had a hundred, we have 182 films playing in two days. So it's a lot. That's overwhelming. Yeah. yeah we have, um, crazy. it goes nonstop uh, all day. It's a lot of fun though. I mean, Asbury Park is ridiculous. So every festival that is here, it's, it's so much fun. And so no, many it's called <laughs> hang on to your shorts. You're just like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. We had to change the name after you. We had it was the first year we did it. It was called Jersey Shore Shorts, and someone said, "Oh, we sort of have the name, so you can't use it." So we, we couldn't think of anything, and I was like, "Oh, we got to hang on to this. We got to hang on to our shorts here." And they're like, "That's it. That's the name." And it's stuck. And it's seven years now. So wow, that's crazy. That's very cool. And it, it's funny uh, that people that come out here, and it, it is it's such a Jersey fest too because. I had people come and say, it was so cool. I'm sitting down and they weren't even like had films in it. But I looked to my right. There's a guy from Sopranos. I looked to my left. There's a guy from Clerks. And I'm like, yeah, it's typical. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you could be at a diner and that could be the case. <laughs> it's Asbury Park. You never know who's going to be down there. And it's like, they randomly are just there. <laughs> that is so funny. And it happens quite a bit. They're like, oh, yeah, we came down just to hang out. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, uh. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's such a Jersey fest, but it's so much it's so much fun. So good. Uh, hopefully, I don't know. Well, if if everything's back to normal and, and everything's back to normal, we will be there. Yeah. And if not, we could always do a, a <laughs> video of you. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm in. You know how to find me. Yeah. So we had a uh, um, even last year we like to sometimes surprise. Uh, we we did it in the past, but like sometimes we know like an uh, an actor is going to be there, and uh, our friend Jack Mulcahy from Brothers McMullen. Oh, yeah. It was his birthday. So I said, you know what? Uh, we wanted to honor him with like a New Jersey honorary award, but we didn't want to tell him. So, because uh, we knew he was coming anyway. <laughs> so I got the younger brother from Brothers of McMullen to do a, a video. No and way. Had no idea. It's the guy's birthday. He had no idea he was winning an award. And I'm like, oh, I got something real quick. And I turn on the uh, the big screen and, and there's the younger brother um, who was in the Geico commercials, all those Geico commercials. Right. So he and he, he's like, oh, Jack, how are you? You got this award and happy birthday. And he was just like, oh my god, it was it was a great moment. So, so cool. I'd like to do more oh, things like that. Job. <laughs> that's awesome. A lot of people are like, oh my god, that's so funny. You're like, yeah, whatever. We try to do some different things. So uh, yeah, those are a little nuts. <laughs> that's so cool. But uh, so how how's the the film uh, doing uh, otherwise? Uh, you, you put it in other festivals as playing. Yeah, I mean, it's a weird year for festivals. But yeah, I think we're waiting to hear from like thirty right now because I guess it's like you get into Sundance and then everybody's giving us these waivers. Yes, yeah. Um, which I really appreciate. So um, I think we're waiting to hear from like thirty, and so far we're in ten or something. Wow. Well. Yeah. Um, a lot yeah. of being pushed back or canceled or online now or a lot of them are online like we just heard from brooklyn film festival we just got in there and they're going to do all their stuff online they're selling mm -hmm. tickets um such a I shame it's so great to go to brooklyn and go see the festival there it's just no so i know it's so sad mm -hmm. um but yeah i wrote another uh short called stud boob uh -huh. um and i think that's the one that just got into brooklyn film festival so that's all done it's out there what it, that's all finished. You had that done and it, it's submitted. Stud boob, yeah. So we're going out right now with meats and stud boobs. So both of them, it's, I'm having trouble keeping track of which ones are where. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's good. It's exciting. Stud boob is another one that I wrote when I was had assigned myself my short <laughs> shorts assignment. Do you, do, you, do you enjoy the, like, I've been in the indie stuff most of my life. I know you've done a lot of indie films, but do you enjoy 
this independent uh, writing, directing shorts and out there in these festivals. Do you enjoy doing that? I mean, yeah, it's it's still a little early for me. Like I haven't been to very many festivals yet. Um, but in terms of shooting, um, it's like all I ever want is like somebody's buddy who's got a camera. My husband's the first AD. I'm acting, directing, and holding my own microphone. And, you know, we edit it for as long as we possibly can. <laughs> and, you know, it was like my kids... Um, babysitters were all of our PAs and everybody worked for pizza. There were like five of us in the room. It was just, it's, it's all I want. Um, but it's cool because, um, you know, I think it was, I think it's important to spend time with people calling you the director, yeah. um, like just in terms of hours, you know, and having just come off the set of this lifetime movie I was directing, it was really helpful to have worn that title because it doesn't freak you out as much once you get used to it, you know? Um, and I, I think I be, have become a lot more sure of myself because of the shorts. Are you, uh, well, when this is all over, you're going to go back to filming that, that other film? Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, because of the force majeure, it, it's actually cool because insurance covers all of this. So um, it's the day Canada is, or Vancouver is able to shoot, we will do three days of prep and then go right back in. Oh, wow. um, so it's nice to know I have a job waiting for me, you know? Um, I feel really, really fortunate. Yeah. Um, I know that's pretty rare right now. Yeah, definitely is. Some people don't know what they're going to be going back to, but I heard there's a lot of auditions on online, a lot of, a lot of producers and uh, people are auditioning people. Doing I'm like, can we all just freaking not right now, you guys? Like, have you done any? Have you done any online like this at all? Yeah, I just did one. Like, t I've had to put a movie on for my kids and like record an audition in my sister's b uh, bedroom. <laughs> I was like, this is so stupid. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm trying. You know, but it's like it's so hard. The kids are. I mean, it's how am I supposed to do anything? Yeah. Besides keep them alive, it's. It's a big task, you know. Well, trolls, trolls, uh, trolls comes out tomorrow. You can watch Trolls. Oh, there you go. Yeah, today they watched Onward. It's just oh, a yeah. Yeah, running video screen. Um, yeah. But I'm doing a pilot, and I'm working on uh, a couple of really cool projects that um, I really like in the meantime. And my husband and I have negotiated. I get three hours a day all to myself. Um, so I'm writing during that time. And, yeah. Oh, great. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, keep them coming and uh, can't wait to see more and more work from you in the future. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. And all your students and everybody can um, follow me on Instagram. I'm, I actually haven't been very active on there for the last couple of weeks because I've been so slammed. But yeah. normally I post every day um, and it's Ashley Williams and company. Um, so it, we, I have fun on there. It's very, yeah. very self-deprecating. I make, make a lot of fun of myself. <laughs> Would you, do you have any uh, advice for, for them uh, that you would say getting into acting or film, uh, directing, writing? Uh, what's the best advice you could give to, say they're all out here, the high school kids, grades 9 through 12, they all want to get into this? What would you say? Yeah, I would say I think it's, a, I think it's really easy to, um, to try to figure out, you know, uh, to try to, I think it's really easy to end up focusing on the logistics of like, how am I going to get an agent? How am I going to get discovered? How am I going to get my work seen? What's more important is that the work is good and you guys are young still. So, um, what I would advise, I hate giving advice, but since you asked, um, what I would advise is work and and live your days as if you already are successful. So have the work ethic, have the commitment, um, you know, get your body shape and in strong, get your chops up. You got to get up. This is something my husband says to me all the time. You got to get up. You got to get up on stage. You got to get up on your open mic nights. You got to get up because, because the day suddenly there is an opportunity and you will, and it will come out of nowhere. You need to be ready. And that's what's way more important than spending your teenage years trying to figure out how to get heard. Um, what's more important is to do the work of it. Okay. Um, and I swear the rest of it will fall into place. I swear. Is there anything else you wanted to promote or put out there? Ming was putting all your stuff on on there. If you see the, uh, the, uh, the comments there, all your. 
all information that you were saying. Oh, that's so nice. Um, anything else I want to get out there? Um, I think the more we can empower our women right now, um, the stronger we're going to be as a community um, for the arts um, in the in the way of writing and directing. Um, I think it's really easy because girls are so intuitive and so smart and can kind of get a sense of every room. It's very, it's very wise to sit back and watch and help leaders. But what I have found is that women make the best directors because we are so intuitive and because we understand things on a level that I'm sorry, men just don't. <laughs> and, um, so uh, ladies who are watching, do your work, read your books, put yourself through an education of your own making, if that's what it takes. Um, we're going to be, the girls are so much more prepared. Um, <laughs> True. We just, we don't True. settle. Especially we don't, in high school. And the high school girls are, they, they're, they're just, they're there already. We don't mess around. And, and the amount of men in their 60s that I meet on a daily basis right now who say, oh, you're way more prepared um, and well researched than I have ever been, and I've been doing this for thirty years. And that's that girls for you. That's what girls do. We have a great set. Um, I don't think I, I didn't put it out there the, the sets yet, but uh, I put a great set together that your films in. It's all women women empowerment. And oh, cool! The films are unbelievable, and they're either directed mm -hmm. by a woman or a woman starring in it, just in it as an actress and just blowing it away. So you're one of them. <laughs> so right, so glad that makes me so happy. Thank it you. It really is a strong set. So I, I I advise people when it comes out, when it's there, when I have it all out there to go see it because it is amazing. And that's most of those people so are going to be nominated and probably win awards. So that's so cool. I love that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate it. Well, thanks for coming. Oh, uh, and then uh, yeah, thanks for coming. And uh, also, uh, good morning, Miami. It's where I saw you first. No. <laughs> that's. That was so long ago, dude. Uh, yeah, I used to, I, I remember watching that show. I watched all the episodes, then it got canceled. And I remember after the first season, like half the cast was gone. I was like, "What's going on?" And totally, I was like, "What's going on? Like, what is happening here? Are we okay?" That was that was it. Was a great show. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. And there was like one other friend of mine that's out there, probably watching right now, and he's like, and and. A while back, and I, I, we were talking about it. I was like, "Yeah, Good Morning Miami." He's like, "I I love that show too." I'm like, "Yeah, we're the two people that like the only two people I know." It was like you guys and my dad. <laughs> it's so good though, but that's where I got to see you first, and uh, and yeah. go from there. So that was that's so nice. Thanks. Just wanted to add that in. <laughs> you. But uh, thanks so much. And I know we went over a little bit over. Sorry about that, but it was great. Okay. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, Thank you so much for having me. It was really fun. Yeah, great. So he's going to, Ming will turn the thing off there. But thank you so much.